Good day. For this afternoon, we will have our lecture on data presentation. If you have variables for each of a thousand respondents in your study, how will you reduce this large data set to prepare for easier analysis? And what are the statistical measures can you compute from the 8,000 variables you obtain from your study for better comprehension? So in any presentation, you have to have organized data. This is classifying data sets to make them more useful. Summarize, you make brief descriptions of the features of a specific data set of the sample or measures of data. And describing, this refers to the concise or brief interpretation of what your data would like to convey. So review, we have our discrete and continuous quantitative variables, discrete would be including whole numbers and continuous would take decimal places. Qualitative values, on the other hand, are ordinal using ranking and nominal with no ranking order but have specific delineations such as race and gender. Before we analyze data, we have to make sure that we have cleansed our data with out-of-range variables weeded out. For qualitative variables, we could do numerical coding, male and female, Filipino, American, African, American, could be represented by 0 or 1 or 0, 1 and 2 respectively. So for example, this table using strings and text for categorical values are shown. Data cleaning. Comment on the above data set. You could notice that height in meters, there's a 3.7, which we all know there's no person with that kind of height, so we could remove it and discard the data. Descriptive statistics. These are statistics used to summarize a large data set by a few meaningful numbers. Quantitative variables are measures of central tendency, if you remember in our first year lectures. Sample mean is the average. Sample median is the ranked value. And sample mode is most frequently occurring number. This is useful to present with an accompanying percentage of occurrence. So remember, for normal curves, it could be either right skewed or left skewed. How to check for normality? Why do we have to check for normality? To present the appropriate descriptive statistics and to apply the correct statistical tests. How? This could be shown by graphs, descriptive statistics, skewness is the sideways deviation, and keratosis is the peakness caused by an infrequent extreme deviation, and the use of formal statistical tests. So, for example, these graphs. use. So, histogram is the easiest to use. The diagonal is the normal distribution curve due to deviations. Note that the central portion of the line, severe deviations mean non-normality. Deviations at the ends means they are outliers. Right or left skew, so just remember, skewness of data would mean right skewness is greater than zero, normal is zero, left is less than zero, with usual range of standard deviation of minus three to plus three, 
and acceptable range is a minus 1 plus plus 1. Kurtosis is normality should not be used on skewness alone. Kurtosis is the thickness of the bell curve and usual normality is negative 1 to positive 1. So your kurtosis is greater than 0 and your flattened kurtosis is less than 0. So small sample, if your n is less than 30, always assume it's not normal. Moderate samples, 30 to 100. If formal test is significant, accept non-normality. Otherwise, double check using graphs, skewness, and kurtosis to confirm normality. Large samples, n is greater than 100. If formal test is not significant, Accept normality, otherwise double check using graphs, skewness, and pertosis to confirm non-normality. We have different methods of data presentation and it would all depend on your preference and the data that you are to present. We usually use textual, tabular, and graphical forms when presenting. Data in paragraph form are examples of textual presentation. For example, read the following. In a survey determining the prevalence of diabetes done in Barangay X in the National Capital Region, Philippines, there were a thousand respondents with equal numbers of males and females. The ages of the male ranges from 15 to 65 years, while that of the female range from 12 to 70 years. Tabular presentation, on the, other, on the other hand, uses tables to present data. This would be a table on 10 leading causes of mortality. And we have to remember that your table should be labeled appropriately, parts of which would include the table number, the title, the column headings, row headings, body of the table, footnotes, and the source of the table. Table number is numbered consecutively as they appear in the report. Use Arabic numbers and place on the first line of the title of the table. Written as Table 1. Title of the table. It tells what, where, and when the data was taken. Table 1. Number and percent of population by age and gender. Las Piñas, 2010. Column headings indicate the basis of classification of the contents. Indicates the nature of the column contents. And if in the text of the report, the column of a specific table is referred to by a number, that number should appear in the column heading of that specific column and specific table. Row headings indicate the basis of classification of the rows and indicates the contents of the row. Body of the table would have cells. This would be the intersection of a column and a row. Number in the cell should be aligned by decimal points. No cell should be left blank. If there are no entries, place a zero or a hyphen. The body may have extra columns or rows for marginal totals. Footnotes. It's denoted by small letters, not numbers. And it's placed immediately after the last row of the table. And your source should be specified when the data are not original or are just taken from another work or study. And it's placed after the footnote. So we go back to our previous example. This is tabular form. 10 leading causes of mortality per 100,000. Types of table are the following. Master table. Single table, which shows the distribution of observations across several variables. Simple or summary table, a table that shows frequency, distribution of fewer variables derived from a master table. And dummy, a master or a simple summary table that do not have entries in the cells gives an idea of what outputs may be expected.
So these are examples of tabular presentations. Graphical presentation would utilize graphs, diagrams, and charts, which are much easier to read and would appeal to more people. Types of graphs often used are bar charts, pie charts, component bar diagram, histogram, frequency, line diagram, and scatter plot. Simple rules in making graphs. The title must include both dependent and independent variables. The independent variable goes on the horizontal axis while the dependent variable goes on the vertical axis. Label the units on each axis. Simple rules in making graphs. Use an appropriate scale for each axis. Every space along the axis is worth the same amount. All data must fit on the graph scale and a key must be provided if there is more than one independent variable. Line graph. It's a way to summarize how two pieces of information are related and how they vary according to one another. So you have your y and x-axis. Usually x-axis is over time. Pie charts. A pie chart is a circle graph divided into two pieces. Each piece displays the size of some related piece of information. Pie charts are used to display the sizes of parts that make up the whole. Bar graph consists of an axis and a series of labeled horizontal or vertical bars that show different values for each bar. The numbers along a side of the bar graph are called the scale. Other graphs that we could utilize would be the following. A pictograph. It's a pictograph uses an icon to represent a quantity of data values in order to decrease the size of the graph. A key must be used to explain the icon. Advantages and disadvantages are the following. And line plot. A line plot can be used as an initial record of discrete data values. The range determines a number line which is then plotted with x's for each data value. Advantages and disadvantages are the following. Bar graph portrays absolute or relative frequencies, population rates of qualitative or discrete quantitative variables. The length or height of bars or rectangles show the value of frequencies or rates. Bars have same width and separated from each other. May be horizontal, usually for qualitative variables, or vertical, discrete variables. This is a graphical representation of your tabular form example a while ago. This is your 10 leading causes of mortality in the Philippines. In an eyeball, you could see the top three diseases and see how it is afflicting Filipinos. Another example of the bar graph. And distribution of infants according to number of illness episodes for the year. Also use the bar graph. Pie chart. Shows portions of a whole or total. It's ideal when you only have a few categories to present. For example, this has four divisions. Maternal deaths by main causes. What's wrong with this pie chart? Component bar diagram. One big bar to depict qualitative date, same as your pie chart. And histogram. For continuous quantitative data, represents frequency of a continuous variable including a. Frequency po 
polygon is a quantitative, same as a histogram. And you will see. Line graph to portray trends, x-axis over time. Example changes in growth, temperature readings, and birth and death rates. So this would be morbidity rates of foreign notifiable disease in the Philippines. So scatter point would be quantitative variables with correlations between two quantitative variables. This is your scatter plot table. And this is a summary table of types of graph, variables depicted, and functions of graph. So each would have its own advantages and disadvantages for us to learn and present data for our research. Should be self-explanatory, clear and concise titles. Scales should be properly labeled. Avoid too many figures in a single graph. It's a basis of classification and colors may be used to differentiate between items in the graph. Thank you for listening to this data presentation lecture. Please do subscribe to our PMCH channel for more lectures on preventive medicine and community health.